Fraser was number one. What he did in The Whale was something I haven't seen an actor do in a very long time. Uh, I, I didn't even think Fraser was that good of an actor. Because, you know, we've seen him in these big action blockbuster films or family-friendly films, and he's competent, he's good. Um, but to be this good? Wow. Uh, was not expecting that from him. So... The fact that then Austin Butler comes into the picture, it scared me a bit because the momentum started to shift. He was uh, Fraser was such a lock for so long. And then that love for Elvis and that love for Butler started seeping through. And then Butler started being the favorite to the point where I ended up predicting Butler to win. Even though I wanted Fraser to win, I thought the smart bet was on Butler. So when Fraser won, I'm like, holy crap, yes, yes. Now, did you think that just based off the timing of everything, that after the sad passing of Lisa Marie Presley right after the Golden Globes, like two days afterwards, did you think that that would affect Oscars voting for Best Actor, that there would be a landslide of support of empathy for the, uh, for the Presley family? Um, and the, and that Austin Butler would get the the sentimental vote. I did right after Golden Globes happened, and that's when Lisa Marie died. And I did, but I think that's that 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 uh, notion started to die down a little bit as we started getting to the Oscars. So then I stopped believing in it. I'm sure I'm sure many people voted off of that notion alone, though. Yeah, and and uh, I I agree as well. Um, I you're and you're right about Brendan Fraser. I he's always been like like the nice guy that you root for. You know, you see him in George of the Jungle, and you see him in the uh, the Mummy movies, and and even the last couple of years, he hasn't been as high profile. But seeing him in um, oh crap, the uh, Doom Patrol, he's mm -hmm. also he plays the uh, the overweight aging. Um, uh, race car, stock car driver, NASCAR driver that ends up on the you know in the DC Comics Doom Patrol TV show, and does yeah. a pretty good job there too, but very less, not nearly as high profile kind of thing. So I I didn't know that he had this kind of a role in him. Like not not to say that he didn't have skills, but he I don't think he's ever been pushed this far with his acting chops before. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. Uh, the the other thing I wanted to bring up was um, was this not the best, the greatest, or most significant year ever for fat suits? <laughs> I guess so, <laughs> considering that three movies were nominated for fat suits: Elvis, The Whale, and The Batman, all for their usage of a fat suit <laughs> yeah and, and, and like like i uh you know thank thankfully we've we've come to a place where unlike robert de niro in raging bull where he was so method he put on 60 or 70 pounds we're we're not as a, a place where we go well okay well like we we love our actors but we don't want to have them <laughs> put on 600 pounds to be Listen, in the we're just just to star in the whale um which of the uh, so we we got three the the big ones are Tom Hanks in the fat suit as the Colonel in Elvis we have uh, we have Colin Farrell in um, as the Penguin in the Batman and obviously Brendan uh, Brendan Fraser uh, as the Whale Wh which of those fat suits worked for you and which ones didn't uh, work yeah for you um. Real quickly, that that joke you just said set me off. Uh, I it's just, I can imagine that call being Darren Aronofsky saying, "Hey, Fraser, listen, we need you to get on the verge of heart failure, just on the verge." <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> yes, I, I and, and part of me too is I'm thinking like an old 1940s uh, manager kind of guy, like like the kind of guy that's like smoking a cigar at an office and like like man. Yeah, Brendan, baby. Yeah, you, you got to put on 600 pounds. Fat suits are hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the, to get to the, the question at hand, the Batman and the Whale were the best usage of a fat suit. And, oh, my goodness, dude. 
um, Tom Hanks almost ruined Elvis for me. Almost. His acting and that fat suit almost ruined Elvis for me. It didn't. It did not. I still really enjoyed Elvis. And what they were able to do with Colin Farrell as the Penguin, wow. I didn't even know that was Colin Farrell when set photos started to be leaked for the Batman. The whale. Oh, wow. That's Even though, if you want to be nitpicky about it, there are certain points in that film where you could see it is a suit. But it's not enough to take you out of that trance of when you're watching and experiencing that film. Yeah, you know I, what I mean. I, I agree 100. It, it's uh, there. There are points where just you can see where the makeup ends and the and the actor begins, um, and that that could be more of a cinematography thing than 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 just the the actual pure makeup itself. Uh, but yeah, I I, it, I thought he acted. Brendan, Fer- uh, Brendan Fraser was so good at, at acting with the suit on and feeling the weight of the suit. Mm-hmm. Um, when when you think about Tom Hanks in a fat suit, like that's that's sort of my go to as to why I hated the Elvis movie. And I am one of the oh. biggest. I am one of the biggest uh, Tom Hanks fans out there. Mm. I I love him. You know, he's he's the modern day the modern day Spencer Tracy. He is. You know, he he is America's dad kind of thing. Yeah. But to see Tom Hanks in a fat suit. <laughs> With a know, wonky accent. Uh, and, and and you know what I kept thinking of the entire time that I, I saw him in a fat suit? I kept thinking of Martin Short's character, Jiminy Glick, where Martin Short is in a fat suit interviewing celebrities and kind of fawning all over them so the fact that i was watching a serious oscar contender and i kept thinking of martin short as jiminy glick going and and tell me more about that latest movie that you're in it, <laughs> while watching <laughs> tom hanks two-time oscar winning actor tom hanks in a fat suit as he lustily looks after young elvis I, oh, man there's something about the the makeup on Elvis, and I'm sure the technology was probably very similar, but, but, why, why <laughs> the fat suit? Like, like, yeah. like, I, I, I'm not a huge Elvis fan. I'm not a huge music fan. Like, I, I like music, but I'm not like a huge music historian like I am with movies and sports. But does anyone know what the like? Does anyone who's not a hardcore Elvis fan actually even remember what the Colonel looks like, or exactly I, how no. fat he was? So the idea that you know. We love Tom Hanks, but we're going to put him in a fat suit. <laughs> yeah, if if you're not in tune with Elvis, you would think Tom Hanks was completely made up for the movie. Yeah, yeah, almost yeah, like it, like he his character was a was a a combination of different ca- real life characters and he was yeah. a composite character. I could totally see that. Like um like uh Anthony Hopkins in uh Chaplin. Like the yeah, as the yeah. interviewer in Chaplin is a composite character didn't exactly ever exist, yeah. but he is the point of view character. You're right. I could totally see the way the way that they handle it in Elvis. That the yeah their version of Tom Park Colonel Tom Parker could have easily been a made up character. Jesus. And let's put him in a fat suit. <laughs> now it's it's funny, Brian, because I was going for Elvis to win the hair and makeup category because they had won some prior awards, and so I I, I voted for it. I said uh, on my personal ballot, I said it's going to be Elvis because Elvis has won some more awards, and and um, you know aside from the Tom Hanks stuff, there is some good makeup and hairstyling going on with Elvis himself, and Elvis has a better fat suit at the end of that movie than Tom Hanks does that whole movie. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and so when the montage started on Sunday announcing the nominees for hair and makeup and the first clip they bring up for Elvis is Tom Hanks in that fat suit, I went, oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's right. He's in this movie. Yeah, they're losing. I just, I just, lost, I just lost this category. <laughs> and I did. And I did. And I did. You're right. When when the clip that's pulled up is not the one that should be there for the nomination, you're like, oh, 
whoever edited these this montage together didn't didn't even try they're like yeah grab tom hanks and the fat suit that's good enough he's not (laughs) exactly (laughs) um and you're right the the fact that there were two fat suits in the elvis movie and they still couldn't get it right uh i know elvis is fat you're right though elvis's fat suit actually did look pretty good pretty realistic yeah uh, and not uh not too over the top Mm -hmm. um so uh at any final thoughts on uh, on the 2023 95th Oscars uh, ceremony? Anything we didn't touch on that you'd like to get out there? Um, any um, any final thoughts? Any um, oh, and any any upcoming videos that you or the Cinema Squad have that people can check out? Um, yes. Yeah, sure. I'll get I'll get into that for sure. Um, as for the the, the Oscars. I thought it was a successful year for the Academy Awards. I thought that last year was a dud. I thought the Nomadland year was a dud. And this year, for me, brought that celebration of film and the passion for filmmaking back. And I believe that the ratings showed that if you do more things like this, people will tune in. Celebrate films, celebrate its filmmakers and the passion behind all of it. And we will watch. And aside from their motives, the actual show was was paced very smoothly. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the stream, they paced it almost perfectly. But if there's anything I would ever change with the Academy Awards is that it does not have to be that freaking long. Ever. You could cut a couple skits here and there, and trust me, I think you may even get more viewers if you if you promise people that we're going to be shorter. I think more people are willing to watch the, the show, the ceremony, but everything everywhere won, everything everywhere swept. I am so uh, ecstatic over the moon like Ki Hui Kwan was that my number one film swept the Academy Awards. 